Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of What Did the Lady Forget? A Japanese comedy from 1937 that was directed by Yasujiro Ozu. Now, this director's most popular film is probably Tokyo Story from 1953, an excellent movie that is considered by many critics to be one of the best ever made. What Did the Lady Forget is not a title that pops up that often when people discuss Ozu's films, but after rewatching it the other night, I think it's a fun little introduction to this director. Now the plot goes something like this. You have an affluent medical professor and his bossy wife, uh, who are basically tasked to look over Setsuko, their high-spirited niece who's visiting from Osaka. Now, Setsuko is a sassy girl who does what she wants, including smoking, even though she's a minor. Now, one Saturday, the wife sends the professor off to go golfing, which sounds like a good thing for him, but what if you know, our professor here really just wants to hang out, relax, and drink some booze, you know what I mean? So he comes up with a plan to deceive his wife. He drops off his golf bag at the apartment of one of his students, and then he darts off to a bar. Now, unfortunately for him, the niece tracks him down and coerces him to take her to a geisha house instead. So the question is this. Can our two protagonists have a good time without the old wench finding things out? I don't know. Now, going into this, I want you to have an idea of the kind of humor that you're in for. This is not a wacky or silly comedy. It isn't. Focuses instead on the humor of everyday events and character interaction. Now, the true joy of this film is watching the chemistry between Setsuko and her uncle, who basically conspire to have a good time, you know, without having to deal with this grumpy old lady. Now, if I had the option to go back in time to 1937 Tokyo and hang out with these two characters for the day, I probably would. I would definitely have a good time, I think. You know, this film is successful in that regard, and that's also one of the implicitly interesting things about watching a film this old. I mean, you get a feel for the people of that time and place. There are some interesting cultural aspects for non-Japanese viewers as well, like a geisha performance and a few hangout spots in 1930s Tokyo. The show stealer here, though, is Michiko Kuwano, who plays Setsuko. She's very charming and... I would say just a, she has a very good screen presence, I'll, I'll tell you that. Now, I looked up this actress's bio, but her filmography ends in 1946. And that's when I found out that she actually passed away uh, in that year due to pregnancy complications. And she was only 31 years old at the time. But she was in a bunch of movies before then, a few of which I've seen before. You have A Hero of Tokyo from 1930. Uh, 1935, it was directed by Hiroshi Shimitsu. Mr. Thank You from 1936, also directed by Shimitsu. Forget Love for Now in 1937, also directed by Shimitsu, so she did a lot of collaborations with him. He's a good director. And The Brothers and Sisters of the Toda Family from 1941, directed by Ozu. Now, all these, I think, are pretty good films, but What Did the Lady Forget is my personal favorite of what I've seen from her filmography. She definitely had talent, and I find it interesting that I can watch and enjoy a performance from 80 years ago by an actress who passed away far too young, but she still left us something to enjoy. You know, it's, it's kind of special, you know what I mean? Now, with a running time of only 71 minutes, this movie is a fun little flick, and it shoots by in a breeze. You know, it's, you know, it's fairly slow-paced, I would say, for comedy, but very charming stuff here. It was a fantastic detox from all of the horror films that I was watching during October. Like, I really needed this movie bad. It kind of hit the spot. It's currently available on YouTube with subtitles. You can also buy it on DVD, Region 2 DVD with subtitles. I think that's the UK release. It's included as a special feature, I think, with the early summer release from the UK. Another great Ozu film, by the way. So, yes, check this one out if you want something a little different. And as always, I will see you next time.